Yeah, it, it, it can, but why does accounting for something prove that it's true? true? Exactly. And honestly, we, we haven't got into it, and we talk about sort of like the weaknesses of the argument. And I think that's actually one of the weaknesses of the transcendental argument, is that Just conceptually, okay. the part of our argument is saying that Christianity is, as a conceptual scheme is the only, is the only uh, presupposition that's going to count for these things. Let's assume that to be true. Right. How are we now moving from a concept, or right, a con conceptual scheme, and moving that to ontology? Meaning, How are we oh, okay, right. So right. can you break that down, like, from well, I mean, concept to, to reality? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there, okay. there has to be some sort of um, way by which to do that. And I think that is one of the weaknesses. But um, I read an article by a guy named Michael Butler. And he was actually a student of Greg Bonson, who was oh. a student of Ian Till, right? Cool. And Michael Butler actually addressed this issue, and he says that this was actually one of the biggest uh, weaknesses that he saw in the argument. And, and he presented in such a case that I, I, I did see the, um, the problem of it to move from, uh, you know, move into ontology, right? Um, and I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm like completely convinced how he answers it, but how he answered it was to say that Christianity or the Christian worldview isn't just a, con a conceptual scheme. It's something that's in lived experience. It's something that's grounded in human experience. It's something that changes things and has practical value and so on and so forth. And so, like I said, I don't know if I'm, I don't know, maybe he's, he's written other things on that topic and more, more articulated and lucid and defended that better. But, um, I don't know. That's how he does it. Is that he says that the Christian worldview is such that it, it what it is is that it is something that is has ontological bearing. It's, I don't know. I don't know if this is a fair uh, criticism, but it's sort of like how um, Anselm does the ontological argument, right? Sort of has what? that idea and, of God, and from the idea of God, he brings it into existence. But um, I don't know. That's a tough one. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I'm actually surprised and glad you actually mentioned a weakness that you you perceived yeah. that's really um I, that's that's cool of you that's honest and um i respect that that's good man thanks well, I mean, I, yeah no no go ahead what are you gonna say well i was just gonna say well i i guess if you want to be a good scholar you have to realize <laughs> that your position is a little you know it's not completely um not saying that I'm like a scholar or anything like that, but I'm just saying that when you, being in sort of these academic circles, you, you have to realize that, you know, there's probably more that needs to be done for your system in order to be, um, you know, well packaged. It's not like Van Til figured yeah. it out in the 1920s, you know what I mean? It's like, there's still more to be done. So.